A hundred years ago, a Society for Psychical Research was born in Greece. It flourished, became known in the international parapsychology circles, and through glory and turmoil, ceased to exist 35 years later. I will divide this presentation into the following four sections. Angelos Danagras, the first child of the wealthy Evangelidis family, was the founder of the Greek SPR. His father, Kostandinos, was a consul representing Greece in the surrounding countries. His mother, Calliope, was a beautiful woman and a devoted mother. Angelus was attached to his mother, confessing in his autobiography that she was the only true love of his life, and he had, as he admitted, several ones. Such affection probably influenced his later decision to establish the Greek SPR. Starting from top left, here is a collection of his photos from the time he was a graduating student of medicine at the University of Athens up to his advanced age. Soon after graduation, he joined the Greek Navy as a doctor. He took a two years leave to carry out specialization studies at a hospital in Berlin. When he was 48 years, he resigned from the Navy to establish the Greek Society for Psychical Research, which he served as its devoted and very productive president for 35 years. During that time, when Tanagras was in his early 50s, an artist portrayed the seriousness of his face with the receding hairline, the characteristic jagged moustache and his monocle. On special occasions, Tanagras would wear his Grand Navy uniform with all his medals, one of which he received for his participation in the unfortunate War of 1897 still a graduating student. The last photo portrays him at an advanced age, answering questions during an interview. Angelos loved to read the books in his father's library. From a very young age, he showed his talent in writing, publishing short stories in Athenian newspapers and magazines, romantic novels, and novels describing the Greek lifestyle. He also translated ancient Greek tragedies. These are some of his books. I counted 59 novels, most of them published as single books, four theatrical plays and 25 parapsychology articles he published after establishing the Greek SPR. His last parapsychology article was in the Journal of the American SPR in 1949, discussing his theory of psychobolia. Behind this publication, an unfortunate dispute existed involving Tanagras and American parapsychologist J.B. Ryan. He chose his pen name, Tanagras, in his early career as an author. In my opinion, his choice was influenced by the following two reasons. Angelos was a man of small build and very meticulous with his clothes and appearance. He most likely compared his appearance to the short size and meticulously dressed terracotta figurines of the later 4th century BC found in the Greek town Tanagra of Viotia. The similarly sounding pen name of his good friend and colleague in the Navy, Pavlos Nirvanas, could have also influenced him. When Spiritism reached Greece, Young Angelos, doctor of the Greek Royal Navy, attended the spiritistic gatherings that were taking place at this residence out of curiosity. The group of seance funds would pin the photos of the deceased relatives or friends they were trying to contact on the wall behind them. Tanagras did not believe that the dead could communicate with the living. He believed that any information from apparently the dead was actually coming from the present group members telepathically. When he created the Greek SPR, he frequently conveyed his views on spiritism. Hence, the cartoon shown here portrays him among ghosts and demons. In 1933, he prepared a survival test package to attempt six post-mortem telekinesis tasks 
which he deposited by the British SPR. He enclosed the deciphering key to decode the description of its test he planned to perform over five years. For example, in the second survival task, three months after his death, Tanagras intended to break the cross on top of the dome of St. Peter's Church in Rome. Things did not quite work out as planned. Tanagras died 38 years later. His society had already ceased to exist. At the time of his death, nobody remembered his survival package and nobody informed the British SPR to open it. Members of the British SPR in 2007 opened and archived the survival package of the six post-mortem telekinetic tasks organized by Tanagras 74 years after he first conceived the idea. Some events in the life of Tanagras made him resign from his service as a doctor of the Greek Royal Navy to establish the Greek Society for Psychical Research. One was that he wanted to offer Greek society a scientific approach to understand the phenomena. His ideal model was the British Society for Psychical Research. The other reason was personal. He had a prophetic dream that his mother got ill, that he treated her as a doctor and looked after her, and that she eventually died. His dream came unfortunately true in 1919 as he had dreamt it. He carried throughout his life the feeling of guilt that it was him and his thoughts during his dream that made his mother ill. He wanted to study psychical phenomena to understand what had happened. Could our thoughts make somebody sick? Do we possess the ability to affect someone else's mind and body or inanimate objects? Such experiences and his understanding of them influenced him to define his theory of psychobolia. Four years after the death of his mother, in 1923, he established the Greek Society for Psychical Research. The headquarters of the Greek SPR was the residence of Tanagras, shown in the photo, close to the center of Athens. On Sundays, Tanagras gave lectures to a large audience discussing psi phenomena with demonstrations with the help of his mediums. All society members received the honorary certificate of membership. If the Greek Society of Tanagras operated to date, it would celebrate its centenary this December. In his public lectures, Tanagras presented phenomena such as psychometry with the help of his trained mediums. He could also demonstrate the phenomenon of telekinesis after 1931, when his telekinetic medium Clio joined his society. Some of his mediums stayed with him for a long time, like Constandia, but there were new mediums continuously added to the group, like Clio. His youngest medium was Eleni Kikidu. Tanagras trained her in telepathy and clairvoyance, abilities she later practiced professionally as a clairvoyant. In 1953, she made headlines for being able to help the police to catch a killer of a man in Athens. I met Eleni Kikidu around 2000 for my research on Tanagras. Tanagras began his research in Psy by collaborating in long-distance telepathy experiments first with a group of French chemical engineer René Varcollier in Paris in 1928. Through Varcollier, he collaborated with American psychologist Gardner Murphy in New York. He also collaborated with German psychologist and philosopher Professor Österreich in Tübingen, whom he met during the Fourth International Parapsychology Congress in Athens in 1930 and with philosopher and psychologist Prosper Smulo in Poland. Of his latest collaborations was with Italian psychiatrist Professor Ferdinando Cazzamali in Rome. During the tests, the mediums of Tanagras sketched what they captured with their thoughts from apparently the senders in Rome.
sketches were then duplicated and saved by Tanagras and attached on a headed paper of the Greek SPR for comparison and success assessment. I present this sample from the experiment with Katsamali performed on January 10, 1951 for the following reason. In the handwriting of Tanagras, one of the participating mediums was Clio, his early telekinetic medium. Tanagras, however, had clearly declared in his memoirs that Clio had died in 1948. Furthermore, he did not mention her in his 1949 article published in the Journal of the American Society for Psychical Research either, or in a newspaper article he published in 1951 to present his experiments with Katsamali. In addition, Tanagras had established collaboration in long-distance telepathy experiments with medium Captain Rudolf Gross and theologian Professor Karl Beth in Vienna, with zoologist Christoph Schroeder in Berlin and with British mathematician George Tyrell and barrister Christian Victor Charles Herbert in London. Tanagras reached in 1936 parapsychologist Dr. Gerta Walter in Munich proposing collaboration in long-distance telepathy tests. Walter could not gather enough people for the experiment and suggested he contacts the laboratory assistant at the Psychology Institute of Bonn University, Dr. Hans Bender. Tanagras sent him his book, Le Destin et la Chance, with a dedication on its cover, which survives in the archives of the Institute for Frontier Areas of Psychology and Mental Health, IGPP, that Professor Bender founded later. There is no information if such a collaboration ever materialized. The photo shows the Greek long-distance telepathy group in the 1930s. Tanagras sits in the middle with his medium Costandia next to him. Two girls in the front row have their faces erased, possibly to preserve their anonymity. Behind them, on a white screen are attached the objects they attempt to mentally transport to the minds of the other group somewhere in Europe. Standing on the right in the light-colored suit is Panayotu, then a medical student at the University of Athens. He later worked in the medical school becoming full professor of medicine. After his retirement, he published an article in the Estia newspaper in July 1981 titled Psychical Research in Greece in Memory of Angelos Tanagras. In it, he documented the prophetic dream of Tanagras about his mother discussing her beauty. Tanagras began to publish the journal of the Greek SPR Psychike Erevne, Psychical Research, two years after its establishment and continued its monthly circulation for 16 years. He edited the magazine unpaid while its subscribers covered the cost of publication. In 1942, there were not enough of them due to the German occupation of Greece and the magazine ceased its circulation in April of 1942 after the first three issues. Due to the German occupation of Greece from 1941 to 44, gatherings were not allowed. But thanks to a bit of luck, Tanagras managed to carry on with his lectures. He describes in his autobiography the story of the German officer who visited him at home for inspection and eventually helped him get clearance. The German commandatur in Athens issued this permission note in October 1943, allowing Tanagras to continue the gatherings at his home. The highlight of the Greek SPR was organizing the fourth international convention of parapsychology in Athens in April 1930. The successful event established the presence of Tanagras in the world of parapsychology outside the Greek borders. The big names of parapsychology attended the convention in Athens, shown by the Parthenon to pose in their group photo. In 1935, Tanagras participated in the fifth International Parapsychology Conference in Oslo, was elected its president, gave two lectures and presented the film showing 
the telekinesis of Clio with a compass needle. In the group photo of the conference, Tanagras poses in the front row between its organizer, Professor Thorstein Varede, while holding the arm of what appears to be the young wife, Iulia, of the Greek doctor Mavris. The newlywed couple made the trip from Greece to Oslo as their honeymoon. Tanagras appears to use the step behind him, trying to look taller. The film of Clio greatly impressed the participants who extended invitations to Tanagras to offer the same lecture to their home societies. Following Oslo, he visited Budapest. The manuscript of his talk in Budapest has survived, confirming that Clio first appeared at the Greek SPR in 1931 to ask for help because of objects moving spontaneously around her. He noted that she was beginning her university studies. Tanagras explained that he had given her two telekinetic tasks to choose from, an object under a glass dome and the magnetic needle of a compass. She had chosen the latter. Tanagras often received invitations to visit places around Greece to investigate strange and unexplained phenomena known as poltergeist cases. He helped the people who suffered from them, often explaining them on the basis of his theory of psychobolia. One of these cases in Akarnania involved the mystery of a burnt-down house. The lady owner, we see in the photo posing with Tanagras, insisted that the ghost of her late husband did it. But Tanagras was able to show that it was her behind it due to her psychological problems. The other case involved this young boy from Mesolonghi creating havoc around him with flying objects. Tanagras used a trick to reveal to the villagers that the boy was responsible for it. He succeeded in reviving the ancient ritual of firewalking in Greece, a remnant of the ancient Dionysian mysteries. He started his efforts around 1937 and completed them in 1940 when the first public firewalking demonstration materialized north of Greece. The Greek firewalkers could not practice the ritual as it was customary on the religious day of Saints Constantine and Helen celebration because the church had declared it a heresy. Tanagras noticed that other ethnicities in the north of Greece not only practiced the old Greek ritual, but also used it as evidence that the territory belonged to them and not to the Greeks. It was a matter not only of scientific, but also of national importance for Tanagras. He managed to convince both the government and the church to allow it. The photo shows the firewalkers in the north of Greece practicing firewalking on May 21, 1940. Tanagras wrote a booklet about firewalking in Greece published in 1953. He believed that the ability to walk on burning coal and damaged was supernatural. Physics gives a different scientific interpretation of firewalking, however. Tanagras proposed the theory of psychobolia or psychovolia in Greek pronunciation to describe psychical phenomena. The word has two parts, psyche, psychi, and valin, to throw, throwing a psychic element. He defined that psychobolia is the burst of a tiny portion of the universal soul encapsulated in living matter. Tanagras named this psychic element epipsychidion. It is an unconscious and uncontrolled mechanism of the sympathetic nervous system. Strong emotions such as admiration or envy can trigger psychobolia. The inspiration behind his theory of psychobolia came from scientific advances of that time such as the release of energy with a split of the atom and from the powerful radioactivity emitted from matter 
combined with the apparent superhuman powers observed in psi phenomena, such as in telekinesis and poltergeist. In telepathy, the epipsychidion released from one person informs the brain of another person. Telepathy also operates in animals who can sense the arrival of their owner or an upcoming death. Tanagras considered telekinesis as the most important of all other psi phenomena. The released power of the epipsychidion transfers its energy to remote objects, he claimed. His star medium, Cleo, performed telekinesis publicly, confirming his theory of psychobolia. He considered precognition, the ability to see into the future, as impossible. There was not a fixed future to look into, no destiny. Precognition for Tanagras was a combination of telekinesis and telepathy. If we sense that something will happen, it is an idea starting in our brain first. Our epipsychidion transports this idea telepathically to another person, affecting somebody's behavior in ways that eventually confirm our initial thoughts. He gave the example of a car accident. We first think of it, that telepathically influenced the driver to interfere with their driving. We may even affect the mechanical parts of the car through telekinesis. The car breaks down and an accident occurs as we have thought about it. In psychometry, the epipsychidion encapsulated in our bodies saturates things that belong to us. A trained medium senses the information from the object and its owner through its epipsychidion by touching it. One of the mediums of Tanagras sensitive in psychometry was the young Maria Athanasopoulou, who could perform psychometry on the Sunday meetings at the Greek SPR headquarters, able to read the content of sealed envelopes. Tanagras said that the epipsychidion travels to a remote site, observes what it is around, and returns to inform the person, appearing as clairvoyance. He considered it a more complicated psychic phenomenon exhibited by talented mediums. The medium Cassandra was one such good clairvoyant of the Greek SPR. Tanagras believed that upon death the encapsulated epipsychidion in living matter merges with the universal creative energy, the universal soul, contributing to its purpose, which is to perpetuate life. There is no death, therefore, he said, but a simple transformation from its material form to the non-material. Just in passing, we should note that similar theories were circulating by other scientists before Tanagras. I mention a few such ideas discussed by Carlos Alvarado, including the application of hypnosis to heighten psychic abilities, as for instance, the ideas by Alexandre Barretti that a neuric force exists radiating out of matter, probably triggered by the nervous system, with properties similar to electricity, producing motor modifications on other bodies. Such force can propagate through space and through matter. Tanagras admired the American parapsychologist J.B. Ryan. He first sent him his theory of psychobolia in French, published in the 1930s, and its Italian version in 1946. So he was very disappointed when he didn't see his theory mentioned in J.B. Ryan's book the Rich of the Mind, published in 1947. He expressed his disappointment to him through a series of letters exchanged with J.B. Ryan, Tanagras complaining while Ryan trying to calm him down. In one of these letters, the Greek SPR invited J.B. Ryan to visit Athens to observe the telekinetic activity of medium Cleo. 
J.B. Ryan even asked Tanagras to publish his theory in the Journal of Parapsychology. But Tanagras was not satisfied with his response and sent around a letter of protest undersigned by many eminent Greeks. It was a very awkward atmosphere in the parapsychology circles in the year 1948. Tanagras accused J.B. Ryan of plagiarism. Year 1948 was when Cleo died, as Tanagras claimed in his autobiography. Tanagras finally published his theory of psychobolia, but not in the Journal of Parapsychology. He published it in the Journal of the American Society for Psychical Research the following year, unusually without a word in it about Clio. Tanagras introduced his telekinetic medium to the world of parapsychology and to the Greek society following his work by publishing articles between 1931 and 1935 where he discussed Cleo's telekinetic successes with photos of her. According to Martin Eben in his book Psychic Warfare, Threat or Illusion, the film with Cleo's telekinesis inspired Vasiliev to introduce Kulagina in telekinesis. Did Cleo unexpectedly die in 1948. Evidence by the hand of Tanagras indicates her being alive in 1951. I wish I could ask Tanagras why did he claim that she died. I wish I could also ask Cleo why she chose the compass needle over the object under a glass dome to perform her telekinesis. Instead, as I have no way of asking, I constructed the biographical path of Cleo's life based on existing evidence. Cleo joined the Greek SPR in 1931. She was 15 years old. In 1933, Tanagras took her to the physics laboratory of the Athens University to subject her to several tests of her apparent telekinetic abilities. A report was then issued by the physics laboratory technician. When she was 19 in 1935, she began her studies at the university, probably the chemistry department. In 1947, she was tested again by Professor Sandorinis at the National and Technical University of Athens, but no report of results was issued. After the conflict between Tanagras and JBR in 1948, Tanagras publicly declared her dead and behaved as if she was dead. He did not show her 1951 telepathy sketches in his newspaper report and did not talk about her in his JASPR article in 1949. But he added and archived her sketches in telepathic tests during the first three months of 1951. In 1952, she became employed by the Athens University by now her real name, Vasiliki Gyoka. Over the years, she gets promoted to the highest academic level, a step before professorship. At 67, in 1983, she had to retire from the university according to the existing employment law. All these dates are in mutual agreement according to eight different bases of information. In March of 1947, a grant opportunity sprang up for the Greek Society for Psychophysiology, the society's second name, to establish a chair of psychophysiology at the National and Capodistrian University of Athens, with Tanagras as the honorary head professor, by exception from the law of age limit. Tanagras was 71 and all university academics had to retire at 67. An acquaintance of Tanagras, medical doctor Kalamaras, member of the Greek parliament, had put forward a law bill suggesting the creation of this new chair, active in September 1947. 
Tanagras did not pursue this chance. His excuse was that he would have to contact, flatter and beg people he did not think much of. He did not need such an accomplishment, he added in his memoir. He had made a big name for his parapsychology work inside Greece and internationally. He noted that the bill did not go through anyway because the Greek parliament had dissolved due to the war. Yet, in 1947, the Second World War was over and the Greek parliament was operating even though Greece was still suffering from the perils of the civil war. In 1947, Tanagras had discovered that J.B. Ryan had not included his name in his latest book. He had to spend the following year, 1948, protesting for what he considered to be a mistreatment. Some ten years later, he realized the importance of a chair of psychophysiology at the university. It would have secured the continuation of his name and work long after his death. I confess that I never had any particular ambitions for the university, although I now see that I was wrong, because if I had taken care of it, the work would not disappear after my death. My colleagues, who could not expect any income from the society, will be forced to practice the medical profession, but as my successors in the university chair, they would have been willing to continue my work. In 1958, Tanagras had to move to a smaller residence where he could no longer continue his public lectures in parapsychology. He remained mostly absorbed in writing his autobiography. In practice, the Greek Society of Psychophysiology had ceased to function. Tanagras' name still lingered a little in the memory of some and was even referred to in some Greek movies. I heard that at the age of 96 and almost blind, he was transferred to a nursing home for the elderly, where he soon died on February 2nd, 1971.